Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of Gentlemen's Club Whiskey. I am your host, Mark Antimate, and I'm going to do a pretty long video today. And uh, I've been meaning to do this all week, but I've just been wrapped up in work, and I couldn't do it the day of, and I couldn't do it throughout the week. I've just, the time was not allotted to me. And now that it's finally the weekend, I was able to set up my equipment, uh, get the camera rolling, and have my sit down now to get off my chest and off my mind the things it is that I want to say about this whole situation. Uh, wow, what a what a week, and uh, what a story. So, the title of this one is going to be, I guess, about sexism and objectification within the whiskey industry and I want to shoot on this topic and have a serious conversation about this. Throughout the entirety of the week leading all the way up until today when I wanted to speak on this I was over on one side of the fence and after last night uh, something specifically happened last night, and when I woke up today, I found that I've had not a complete 180, but I've had a little bit of a change of heart, and I'm going to tell you my thoughts and what I think about this. So if you guys don't know what's going on, um, in the whiskey world, there is a writer from the UK. His name is Jim Murray. This guy is exalted. He's the creme de la creme, the top of the mountain whiskey writer. Uh, best sells for his whiskey books that are out on the market. And he's been making this book for about the past 20 years called The Whiskey Bible. And he has about 18 editions of this book out. And he's for the most part, has been releasing them consecutively every single year. And so the 2021 edition of Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible book was released maybe about a week, a week and a half ago. And it turns out that there are 34 references, at least inside of this book of whiskey being sexy and comparing drinking whiskey to having sex with women. And uh, a whiskey writer of 10 years named Becky Paskin is the one who had unearthed these 34 references and called Jim Murray sexist and uh, objectifying women with the, the quotes that he said. A little bit about her. So she is now the founder of a, uh, I guess, kind of a blog or it might be a new magazine. It's called Our Whiskey. But prior to that, she contributed to uh, many articles to many different spirit magazines. And she was, in fact, uh, assistant editor and then an editor of a, of a spirits magazine before. So she's been in this industry for about 10 years. She unearthed these 34 references inside of uh, Jim Murray's book about what she uh, so-called calls sexism and ob objectification. And she says, yeah, she just says, the author is sexist for objectifying women with quotes like these. And let me read some of these quotes now. If this was a woman, I'd want to make love to it every night. And in the morning and afternoon, if I could find the time, ellipsis, and energy, ellipsis. This is referring to uh, Pender and Selt whiskey. Next quote. This celebrates maltiness in the same way a sex addict revels in a threesome. Pender and single cask. Next have I had this much fun with a sexy 41-year-old Canadian before? Well, yes, I have. But it was a few years back now, and it wasn't a whiskey. Was the fun we had better? Probably not. 
Canadian Club Chronicles, Water of Windsor. If whiskey could be sexed, this would be a woman. Every time I encounter Merengue Artisan, it pops up with a new look, a different perfume, and mood. It appears not to be able to make up its mind. But does it know how to pout, seduce, and win your heart? Oh, yes. Glen Merengue Artisan Cask. And I got one more. The malt for the woman of your life, first to enjoy her to seduce and or be seduced by, and then to share together. Glenn Farkless Family Cask. So these are some of the quotes that uh, she highlighted as being sexist. And last night I was with my friend and I got into... A heated debate with him over dinner uh, about this topic. And I support Becky's decision to not support Moray's book. I won't support it just because uh, I don't want to read about his his sex capades and uh, or sexual fantasies. And I just want to read about whiskey. And even before this topic blew up at the beginning of this week, um... I never really supported Murray for uh, other reasons, which I will mention now. Uh, He named Ardbeg the best whiskey in the world for two years consecutively, 2008 and 2009, inside of his book. And I was told that Murray worked for Ardbeg for uh, a short spell or at one point uh, selecting cask and If you're on that distillery's payroll doing that, uh, that's very much a conflict of interest. And that's even bigger news and a real whiskey gate, uh, more so than this cancel culture thing about this uh, being sexist and objectification matter is. Because as a whiskey reviewer, that means uh, he's jeopardized as a writer and He lacks integrity and who knows how much he's been paid over the years to uh, give high marks or top top regards to whatever whiskey, whichever one could be paying him the most amount of money. But like I said, that's a conflict of interest. If it is true that he worked for Ardbeg and then he gives them the top whiskey two years consecutively. Very big. That's a that's a big red flag. And uh, for this reason alone is why I won't support him and I didn't support him even before this whole situation blew up. Uh, But this sexist and objectification talk, it just kind of adds fuel to the fire. And uh, here's the part that people might not like. So I'm getting ready to speak on in his defense for just a little bit. And um, in the name of fairness and playing devil's advocate and things like that when it comes to this so-called sexism and objectification of women, uh, did he really, did he really objectify them? So over dinner, I read these exact same quotes uh, to my friend. And at the end of it, he immediately asked me, how is that sexist? And I retorted, because such and such. And he goes, these comments only prove that he's heterosexual, not that he's a sexist. And the definition of sexist means characterized by or showing prejudice, stereotyping or discrimination, typically against women on the basis of sex. So is he prejudiced against women? No. Uh, By mentioning that he likes women, it is showing favoritism towards women, not prejudice against. Is it stereotyping women? Well, one can't say that having a sexual preference of women is stereotyping. Is it discriminating or objectifying against women? No, let's say any sexual analogy or story he tells is not just that it's not just a story but 
let's say that it is in fact true all of these uh things that he listed inside of his book and these women if they consensually and willingly participated in these sexual experiences with mr murray how does that make him a bad guy and how can it be discriminatory or objectifying if they wanted to do this and they participated inside of these uh, sexual encounters with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? The most I can say is that this makes him sound like a monger by uh, talking about multiple private uh, sexual experiences, encounters in public. And it's vulgar at worst. At the absolute worst, it's vulgar. But... Uh, I have to bring down the gavel and I must say that it is not sexist or objectifying. And I must mention that this kind of attack on free speech, I don't know how I feel about it. I really don't. I'm not liking this. When Becky says at the end of uh, her article that brought this to light, not her article, but her um, her social media post that that blew up the uh, whiskey internet this week she ended it and she said this has to stop quote unquote that's what she says and that does sound like a call to action to me to galvanize people to boycott him talking sorry taking food out of uh, someone's mouth this way isn't right and Listen, I really don't like this guy, uh, but to punish someone for uh, utilizing their right to uh, freedom of the press and free speech. uh, I won't buy this book based on my own convictions, and I, I never will. That's just me. But to tell people not to buy this because you're emotional about something that you misinterpret it or you just don't like it because it's vulgar. It just seems wrong to me. And uh, man, I just I just recently watched this movie uh, V for Vendetta. And it's about the UK and uh, a totalitarian government rises up and is in control of the country in this movie. And this Reminds me very much of that because if we all just follow the status quo that has been set up for us to follow, I mean, uh, the status quo that's been set up by the council culture, uh, there will be no more of that free speech or free thought and everything will be linear and without deviation. And I think it's it's sick what he says inside the book. I don't like it. It's vulgar. But in my opinion, in my opinion, I think the book stays. So my closing comments on this. I'm asking you to support me. Forget about this guy for a moment. I have a damn good whiskey book out now. I'm trying to get people to take notice of me. I'm a minority writer, even more so than Becky is as a woman, being a black man. (laughs) You know, inside of America, I don't want to turn this video into a video of politics, but man, we are the most hunted man in America, (laughs) bar none, right now. And it's been that way for the past 400 years. I'm... I'm trying to rise up and make something out of myself and get my piece of the pie. And I'm one of the first. uh, I'm not the first black male inside of the whiskey industry. Uh, I'm far removed from that. But possibly to my knowledge, I think I am the first black author on the matter. And especially if not that, I'm the first black author on a book about Japanese whiskey. There is nobody else. There's four other books that's out prior to mine, but they're written by by white males. So 
I'm asking you to support my book. I got the hard cover here and I got the soft cover here, the paperback, the trade paperback, which is uh, an exact copy of this. And um, if you want to read about whiskey through and through, just whiskey, no vulgarity, no talk about sex or doing sexual things with, with your dram. This is the book. I got lots of uh, color photographs inside of this, which uh, the Whiskey Bible has never had. Uh, it's a beautiful book inside. The, the reviews are much longer. And yes, my presentation is better than that book. Presentation, I'm not saying that I'm a better whiskey writer than him. I mean, that's for you to judge. But definitely my presentation is by far better than his. And the tasting notes are more thorough. I just have more written there inside of inside of those sections than what he writes. And the most important thing is that I keep my integrity. I have not been bought out by any of these distilleries or companies. And in fact, one of these companies, one of these distilleries, which I can't name, they wanted to sue me on the basis of how harsh my, I guess, my critique was about them putting out uh, fake whiskey from Scotland and bottling and labeling it as being coming from Japan, right? So I had a, I had a letter sent to me uh, via their, their lawyer in Osaka, and that wasn't nice, but just the way that I move, I'm honest about what I have to say, and... What can I say? I, I kept my integrity and it kind of got me in hot water, but I, I take pride in that. I don't know if this guy can look in the mirror and say that. If if the claims are true that he selected cast for Art Beg, but he may have not have done that, but the word is going around and it's been out there and it's been floating that this is what he's done. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. Beautiful books. 190 pages, 50 Japanese whiskeys. For the hardcover, I just found a brand new supplier uh, to make this one at first. Uh, when I first sent it to the printers, they sent it back to me with uh, matte pages inside, which I was not a big fan of. Being a very um, photo and image heavy book, it needs to have glossy pages. So I just found... Uh, another provider and now I have my finalized copy of that book out I'm going to leave a link down inside the description of where to go get it for all the ladies out there and gentlemen that don't want to support mongers or just sketchy people right go buy my book I'm asking you to I need your support I would like to have your support. I want to have you on my team. I understand how you feel about this situation. I empathize with with your emotions, but it is just that it's it's a very emotional topic and especially when emotions flare up, you could say the wrong things or make the wrong decisions. Cancel this guy based on your own convictions and you cancel him with your wallet by not buying the book but for the book to not be carried by the whiskey exchange or such and such company or online brand or something like that don't take food out of this guy's mouth let the people who want to buy this book and if they support him and they still like him after saying all this stuff let those people go out and buy his book but if you're one of the few like me that don't want to support this guy, like Besky Paskin uh, doesn't want to support this guy, well then speak, speak with your wallet. And it's listen, it's really not going to hurt him much if you never bought his book to begin with, right? He's not going to miss you. But if you feel in your heart that you don't agree with him and you want to remove yourself from him and any of his this current and his future works, please do that. Anyways, gentlemen, I'm going to go off and I'm going to finish this dram. I've been talking. I haven't even touched this thing yet. Beautiful whiskey in hand.
I'm going to turn off the camera and uh, enjoy this whiskey. Salute to you wherever you may be out in the world. Much respect to you, whoever you are, no matter which side of the line you fall on. Have, res have respect for the other side or try to see the other side's point of view. When it comes to the cancel culture side and wanting to get this book taken off the market, I empathize with you. I sympathize with you. But at the same time, it's an attack on free speech. And once that's gone, who are you going to complain to then, right? So anyways, I'm, I'm done. Thank you all for watching. Salute to you wherever you may be. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. Keep it classy.